Today I want to show you my favorite reverb. Hey, Joe from Home Studio Corner here. Hope you're doing well. If you don't like reverb, this video is not for you. But if you've noticed that reverb and ambience has been making a huge comeback the last few years, pay attention. I'm going to show you one of my favorite types of reverb. And guess what? It's not a specific plugin. If you have a basic reverb plugin, more than likely you can do this sound. So here's the thing I just recorded for you. Um, and here it is with no reverb. Ugh. Re Ugh, barf. Uh, and here it is with reverb. reverb. Just lovely. Listen to that reverb tale. Now, I'm going to show you what the reverb is, and I'll explain why I like it so much. So here, let's just listen to it real quickly. Here's the reverb by itself. So no raw tracks. This is just the reverb sound. Loverly. So I'm here using PreSonus Studio One Pro, and it comes with this little reverb plugin called Room Reverb. And there's a bunch of templates in here, a bunch of, um, what am I trying to say? Presets. And most of them I don't love the sound of, but this one, there's a couple that I love. I end up using this one a lot just when I need something to have lots of space and ambience. So if you're not familiar with a plate reverb, back in the old days, there used to be like a physical metal plate off in a closet somewhere, big old hunk of metal, and they would hook up transducers to it, and they would send audio signal into the metal plate, and then there would be some transducers on the other end that would pick up the signal, and you could record it back. And it was a plate reverb. So it didn't sound like a room. It wasn't a room or echo chamber or a spring reverb. It was a plate, so it had a different sound. I've never used nor heard a real plate reverb in real life. I only have plugins. Who cares? They're fun. So the the I think the way this works is it actually makes a room the size of a plate. I'm not sure how the inner workings work, and I don't care, and I don't mess with a lot of the settings. What I do like is the flat plate preset. Now, what a plate reverb does, to my ear at least, there are two sounds. I always do this. I say two, and then I hold up four fingers. There are two sounds to a reverb, essentially. There are the reflections, like the early and late reflections, and that gives you the essence of what the room sounds like. And then there's the tail. And that's just how long it takes for the sound to die down. Sometimes you want one, sometimes you want the other. Usually you want a little bit of both. If you've got drums and they're really dry and you want them to sound like they were recorded in Sound City or Abbey Road or one of those big drum rooms, then you put in a, maybe some sort of room reverb and you add a little of the drums to that and it creates this roomy sound. It's not a huge tail because we're not in the 80s anymore, but it just gives it some space so it sounds a little bit like room mics or sounds like the drums are in some sort of a room. And that's a combination of those early reflections, late reflections of the sound bouncing around the room, and then just the reverb tail. How long does that sound bounce around until it dies down? The reverb tail is what I'm interested in. So in this, uh, this plug-in from Studio One called Room Reverb, if I set it up to the plate setting, You'll notice it has zero pre-delay, and the length is that I've set it to almost seven seconds. And then over here, this mix control here is mixing how much of the early reflections we're having versus just the tail. And on the plate setting, there are no early reflections, so we don't hear any sound of the room. We're just hearing the tail. Add a really long tail to that, like 6.64 seconds, which is ridiculous and seems stupid, but you end up with something that can be really rich and full, like this. Big and full and rich. So if you have a plugin, any sort of reverb, room reverb plugin, uh, whether it's Dverb and Pro Tools or Logic has a bunch of reverbs, go find the plate setting, set it to a super long tail, like six or seven seconds, and then just start sending some stuff to it. One word of caution, if you do it by itself, you're not gonna like it and your mixes are gonna sound muddy and you're gonna say, dang you, Joe Gilder. Problem is, most reverbs tend to sound muddy when you throw a bunch of junk into them. What I do with almost any reverb I have, and you may have seen this already, uh, here's my plate reverb. This is just a part of my mixing template. I always have this reverb ready and waiting for me in case I wanna send something to it. But immediately following the reverb, I have a fat channel, which is just a plug-in with an EQ on it, and I've got it set to 
the biggest thing is right here. I've got it set to high pass, 600, I'm sorry, 200 hertz and below. So it is rolling off everything below 200. The difference is amazing. Sometimes I'll EQ the reverb a little further depending on the given mix, but the default setting is rolling off everything below 200 on the reverb itself. If not, it ends up sounding like this. For an acapella thing, that might work, but for most things, it's going to add a bunch of mud to your mix, and you'll have a real problem finding out, where's that mud coming from? It's from the reverb track. So go in there and just do a high-pass filter, roll off all the excessive low end, and it'll give you a nice, clean reverb. Let me play it for you again, just so you can really hear it. I didn't play it for you super well. Here's the reverb just by itself, without the high-pass filter, then I'll kick it on. Now the reverb is just brightness and just a tiny bit of like mid-range warmth, but none of that low-end rumble that we really don't need in our reverb. We can have it in our mix, but we don't need it in the reverb. There are some mixes where I've sent entire drum kits to a reverb, even a little bit of bass, and it works. It doesn't over overly muddy things up because I EQ out the low end in the reverb. So there you go. That is my favorite reverb. I use a room reverb, that plate reverb, and then maybe a spring reverb, and those are my go-tos. But the plate is by far, hands down, my favorite. One more thing I want to show you, and this is kind of fun. What I love to do is I like to get a big ambient guitar sometimes when I'm recording. So I use, it's the Boss RV six reverb pedal i set it to a modulated reverb that has like this warble and this detuned thing that sounds really cool to me and i'll record a dry guitar track not dry i don't like dry guitars at all i'll record a guitar track with reverb and with delay and bake it into the track and get something like this So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of distortion, a lot of reverb, a little bit of delay in there too, I think. And it sounds cool in the mix, but then what I'll do is I'll take that already reverbed up guitar and I'll send it to my plate reverb. The same one I just showed you. And listen to what it does. Now, that may be too much reverb. Is there such a thing? Probably. And this isn't even a mix. This is just a recording. Um, and I threw the reverb on there, and I loved it, so I left it, so I'll remember to do that during mixing session. But you can add reverbs on top of reverbs. There's no rules to this, and it adds a little stereo width and a bunch of depth and a bunch of warmth and a bunch of all those other words we like to say about our music. So that's it for reverb. If you don't use reverb, if you're like Graham Cochran and you don't like reverb, shame on you. Get your reverb game on. Don't go too much. Don't be too heavy handed, but when you use it, use it. Like really use it. If you want more mixing tips from me, you should check out my five-step mix guide. It's completely free. Super cool. Walks you through a mixing process that you can repeat over and over and over. I think I just said process. Process that you can repeat over and over and over to help you kind of start cranking out mixes more regularly that sound better and continue to improve over time because that's what we want to do, right? Check it out at fivestepmix.com. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.